What is the p-value and how is it interpreted? That's what we will discuss in this video. Let's start with an example. We would like to investigate whether there is a difference in height between the average American man and the average American basketball player. The average American man is 1.77 meters tall. So we want to know if the average American basketball player is also 1.77 meters tall. Thus we state the null hypothesis. The average height of an American basketball player is 1.77 meters. So we assume that in the population of American basketball players the average height is 1.77 meters. However, since we cannot survey the entire population, we draw a sample. Of course, this sample will not yield an exact mean of 1.77. That would be very unlikely. It may be that the sample drawn purely by chance deviates by 3 cm, deviates by 8 cm, deviates by 15 cm, purely by chance differs by any other value. Since we are testing an undirected hypothesis, that is, we only want to know if there is a difference, we do not care in which direction the difference goes. So now we come to the p-value. As said, we assume that in the population there is a mean value of 1.77. If we draw a sample, it will differ from the population by a certain value. The p-value now tells us how likely it is to draw a sample that deviates from the population by an equal or greater amount than the observed value. Let's take a closer look again. So, we have a sample that is different from the population. We are now interested in how likely it is to draw a sample that deviates as much as our sample or more from the population. Thus, the p-value indicates how likely it is to draw a sample whose mean is in this range. If by chance our sample deviates by 3 cm from 1.77, the p-value tells us how likely it is to draw a sample that deviates 3 cm or more from the population. If by chance our sample deviates by 9 cm from 1.77, the p-value tells us how likely it is to draw a sample that deviates 9 cm or more from the population. An example. We get a difference of 9 cm. And our favorite statistics software, e.g. DataTab, calculates a p-value of 0.03, i.e. 3%. This now tells us that it is only 3% likely to draw a sample that is equal to or more than 9 cm different from the population. For normally distributed data, this means the probability that the mean lies in this range is 1.5% that the mean lies in this range is also 1.5% likely and together 3%. If this probability is very low, one can of course ask whether the sample comes from a population with a mean of 1.77 meters at all. It is just a hypothesis that the mean value of basketball players is 1.77 meters. And it is precisely this hypothesis that we want to test. Therefore, if we calculated a very small p-value, this gave us an evidence that the mean of the population is not 1.77 meters at all. Thus, we would reject the null hypothesis, which assumes that the mean is 1.77 meters. But at what point is the p-value small enough to reject the null hypothesis? This is determined with the so-called significance level, also called alpha level. There are two things to notice here. One, very important, 
The significance level is always determined prior to the study and cannot be changed afterwards in order to finally obtain the desired results. Two, to ensure a certain degree of comparability, the significance level is usually set at 5% or 1%. A p-value of less than 1% is considered highly significant. Less than 5% is called significant and greater than 5% is called not significant. Summary. The p-value gives us an indication of whether or not we reject the null hypothesis. As a reminder, the null hypothesis assumes that there is no difference. In contrast, the alternative hypothesis assumes that there is a difference. In general, the null hypothesis is rejected if the p-value is smaller than 0.05. However, as we know, it is always only a probability and we can be wrong with our statement. If the null hypothesis is true in the population, i.e. the mean is 1.77 meters, but we draw a sample that happens to be quite far away, it might be that the p-value is smaller than 0.05, so that we wrongly reject the null hypothesis. This is called type 1 error. If in a population the null hypothesis is false, i.e. the mean is not 1.77 meters, but we draw a sample that happen to be very close to 1.77 meters, the p-value may be larger than 0.05 and we may not reject the null hypothesis. This is called type 2 error. And now I will show you how you can easily calculate the p-value for a variety of hypothesis tests online with DataTab. To do this, simply visit datatab.net, copy your own data into this table and click on hypothesis test. Depending on which variables you click on, DataTab will suggest a hypothesis test. For example, a t-test, chi-square test, ANOVA, Wilcoxon test and many more. For example, if you click on salary and gender, a t-test for independent samples is automatically calculated. If you click on salary and company, for example, an analysis of variance is automatically calculated. If your data is not normally distributed, you can also calculate the non-parametric counterpart. If you now scroll down, you will find the p-value. If you are not sure about the interpretation, you can click on Interpretation in words. A one-factor analysis of variance has shown that there is no difference between the categorical variable company and the variable salary. Thus, with the available data, the null hypothesis is not rejected. Thanks for watching, I hope to see you soon.